H&M is Swedish? Hey son and welcome to the next video. I have to learn more about Sweden in general. And because of this we react today to geography now. Sweden. Please tell me in the comments if there are some things missing and what I should react to next. And yeah, let's go into the reaction. Sweden. I don't have to give much of an introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. Yeah. We've scaled the treacherous Danish peaks of Mülahoy, stomached the ammonia flavored Icelandic Haukark, <laughs> and our wallets were viciously attacked by Norwegian prices of anything. But now it's time. Are they Welcome to the final. Are they so expensive in Norway? I know that the people out there are rich, so. They should be a little bit more expensive, but are they that expensive? Us of Scandinavia, Sweden. Ooh, it's hot. I'm all hot and sweaty right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know the drill. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, kick the. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Uh, Noah's back. By the way. Here we are. Yep. Time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Get a Geography Now t-shirt or Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anyway, all right, you guys, this is it. Our last Nordic country. But what about your constituent? But what about? You're in unincorporated territory. But what about me? We already did your video. I even went there. Okay, anyway, I actually wanted to go to Sweden for this episode, but at the last minute, Sweden was like, dude, we're gonna close off our borders to anyone outside the EU. But you know how it goes. The show must go on. And if we can't go to Sweden, we're gonna bring Sweden to us and in the best possible way with real Swedish people. And I mean like real Swedes, not those fifth generation Minnesota Swedes that eat lutefisk once a year. And so with that, say hi to Jonas and Carolina. Come on in. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got two. They look like Swedes. I mean, I also look like a Swede probably, but they look like Swedes. Swedes. So you guys are the real deal. Swedish, straight up, right? I, uh, I was born in Sweden and lived there for 10 years. And then my mom moved me to the enemy, to <laughs> Norway. Oh, so you're yeah. half Norwegian. Okay. Yeah. And I'm from Skåne, so we might have some angry people out there claiming I'm <laughs> Danish, but... Um... It was LA. You guys were the best <laughs> I could find. So uh, anything you want to say to the Swedish subscribers? Nah, I'm excited for you guys to uh, learn more about your country. <laughs> Our country. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where are you guys from? I'm from Helsingborg. And I'm from Skellefteå. Now, there are many ways you can divide Europe. You know, like you have the Mediterranean. Hey, tomato for sale, tomato. The post-iron curtain. The Balkans. <laughs> but everyone knows the further north you go, things start to get scan delicious and sweet. <laughs> Anyway, lots to cover. Let's look at the globe. One quick thing, please hit a like and subscribe. It helps this channel so much to grow. Thank you. Sweden lies in the region of Scandinavia in Northern Europe and is the largest of all the Scandinavian countries, the fifth largest in Europe and third in the EU. The country is bordered by Norway to the west and north and Finland in the northeast, separated by the Gulf of Bothnia otherwise between them. In this gulf, you can also find Sweden's two largest islands, Öland and Gotland. Otherwise in the south, the only other physical connection they technically have is with Denmark via the partially submerged and partially above ground Öresund Bridge that connects Malmö, the third largest city, to Copenhagen. I'm trying my best with these pronunciations. Yeah, he does the ö uh, weirdly, right? I mean, it's Malmö, right? Or am I totally wrong? I hope so, because I think it's pretty similar to German. Bear with me. The country's largest city, though, and capital is Stockholm, located on the east side of the country, and it actually sits on 14 islands with over 50 bridges at the drainage of Lake Malaren, with over 20 lakes and countless streams. This is why it is sometimes referred to as the Venice of the North. The country Ooh. is divided into 21 counties, each abbreviated by a letter or double letter known as a country code. For the EU statistical system, though, the counties are grouped into eight riksområden, or national areas, to address things like population data and so forth, but they in themselves do not have any administrative function. Otherwise, if you ask a Swede, they might revert back to the three traditional lands of Sweden, Norland, Svealand, and Jotland. Technically, there was a fourth. Österland. So your G is not a G, but a J, a J, like a J? which was basically South Finland when it was under Swedish rule, but that term hasn't been used since the 15th century. Anyway, Stockholm is also the central hub of economic activity and transportation. The largest and busiest airport is Stockholm's Arlanda International, which, like so many European international airports, is located super far from the actual city. Mm. It takes a 20-minute express train or 45-minute car drive to downtown. The second largest airport, Lanfeta International, is located in the second largest city, Jettebori, or Gothenburg, for the misguided English speakers. Jettebori actually also has the largest shipping port 
port in the country and the largest in all of Scandinavia, taking in about a third of all Swedish trade activity. It lies on the Kattegat and Skagerrak, the shallow straits that open up Scandinavia to the rest of the world. With other major cities like Oslo and Copenhagen within radius, here about 70% of all industry and commerce through Scandinavia happens. It's a busy spot to say the least. Finally, the country has quite an organized system of roads and rail networks that more or less parallel each <laughs> other. There are two main north-south highways, the E4 that hugs the entire Bothnia coast and the E45, the longest road in the country that goes along the mountains inland from Jettebori all the way to the border with Finland in the north. Also, it's important to note that Sweden claims to have the most islands out of any other... What is your speed li uh, limit, by the way? Because I think every country except Germany has a speed limit country in the world at over 260,000. In any case, Sweden's domain wasn't always confined to these borders. For starters, Sweden, being Scandinavian, obviously have Viking history. If you know anything about Vikings, you'll know that they went places. They were literally in the Americas 500 years before Christopher Columbus. And when they couldn't conquer an area, they still left their mark somehow. Even the Hagia Sophia in Turkey has runic inscriptions mm. hidden on it. It wow. was like Viking graffiti, like uh, Vikings were here. On top of that, in the 1600s, Sweden started to become a European powerhouse and, like many other countries, took an attempt at settling and colonizing places outside of Europe. At one point, Sweden had fortresses and colonies in the Americas, Africa, mostly in what now is Ghana. It's, further, which it's, more it's impressive. I never thought about Sweden to be a colonizer. Within Sweden, you even have a few micro-nations. We don't have time to get into each of them, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One of them was made as a protest by an artist to protect mm -hmm. those wooden sculptures. Anyway, the developmental structure behind Sweden has a lot of history behind it. Like Visby on Gotland Island, probably the best preserved medieval city in Scandinavia. The old town Stockholm neighborhood of Gamla Stan was built as a fortress to protect against pirates. Later on, one of your kings would actually become a pirate, but that's another story. In fact, the country has 15 UNESCO heritage sites, and actually, Here's fellow geography Rebecca to explain a little bit more about the top notable sites of Sweden. Rebecca, take it away. Hi everyone, my name's Rebecca, and if you're ever in Sweden, here are some of the most notable sites. There are plenty of notable castles, fortresses, and cathedrals, such as Drottningholm Castle, Gripsholm Castle, Örebro Castle. But here is it again like a uh, like a G, the G, uh, the G. Cathedrals such as Drottningholm Castle, Gripsholm Castle. It's not a tray. Örebro Castle, Visby Town Wow, Hall, I like this one. Home Castle, Gripsholm Castle, Örebro This is so cool with this little circles in the outside. Örebro Castle, Visby Town Wall, Uppsala Cathedral wow. and St. Mary's Cathedral. Sweden also has the highest concentration of rune stones in the world, with the most famous one being Rökstena. There's also many historical Viking sites, such as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Old Uppsala and Alestena. If you're looking for more excitement, check out the theme parks Liseberg, Grönalund and Skara Sommarland. Notable museums in Sweden are the Vasa Museum, Abba Museum, Fotografiska mm -hmm. and the Museum of Natural History. But all of those Vasa are Museum, so, such great Abba buildings. Museum, yeah, again, that's like out of a movie with the brick stones and stuff like this and the Museum of Natural History. In Stockholm, you can find the newly renamed Avicii Arena. It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. What? Thank you, and I hope... How cool is that? It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. Thank you, and I hope you come to visit Sweden someday. Thank you, Rebecca. Speaking of Swedish places, like other Nordic countries, we have Allemansrätten, which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken advantage of that Allemansrätten thing? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, you just like pick berries and like, hey, hey. Um, yeah, I mean, most places are owned by the country, so you're allowed to be there. Can you just like walk in someone's backyard? That's interesting because there was, or is a very famous show in Germany, Seven vs. Wild, where you go seven days into the wilderness and then try to survive there only with seven tools, seven. <laughs> and the first season was in Sweden, and unlike the other seasons, they didn't have to ensure that they have a permit or something. And now I know why, because Sweden has this ro right to roam. You can be like, hey. No. Allemann and Strata? <laughs> no, it has <laughs> to be public not. land. Well, speaking of roaming in nature, there's lots to explore in Sweden. Which brings us to... <laughs>
Now, in the Nordics, each country kind of has their own trademark physical trait. You know, Norway has the mountains and fjords. Denmark has the flat grassy farms. Finland is the land of lakes. And Iceland is basically just one big volcano. And then you get to Sweden and it's like a little bit of everything. Yes, there's even a small sand volcano in Simisramn. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sweden lies on the Scandinavian peninsula of northern Europe, shared with Norway, on the east side of the Scandinavian mountain chain that separates them. Here you can also find the tallest peak Kepnekaise in the far north. This means that Sweden gets most of its river runoff from the mountains that mostly flow down into the Gulf of Bothnia, and the longest river shared with Finland being the Torne or Tornio River. The longest river fully within Sweden <laughs> though being the Dolelvin River. Amongst these rivers is an abundance of lakes and ponds peppering the flatter hilly valleys below. The largest of these lakes being Vernen and Vettern in the south. The reason Sweden has so many of these pockety lake zones and eroded rivets is because they sit on a post-glacial rebound zone. Basically, during the Ice Age, all this land was crushed by heavy ice. But after the ice melt, like a sponge, Sweden started to slowly spring back up again. This means every year Sweden recovers on average about 4 millimeters of land from the sea. In some places, mm. even more. This is why you might see extended piers from old homes that want- So that's why you- probably don't fear the global warming so much because um when the yeah, sea goes higher you also go higher used to be situated on the shore. The country has four general climate zones, the oceanic zone in the south by the Baltic Sea. This is also where most of the agriculture is situated. The continental zone is in the middle part of the country. And finally, the subarctic in the north just above that. These areas have the highest forest concentration in the country. Also, the peaks of the mountains are classified as tundra. The top 15% of Sweden lies just north of the Arctic Circle, where the coldest temperatures and highest snowfall happens. Otherwise, in the south, they might not even get any snow at all in the winter. Just what? cold, depressed rain numbers oh. fluctuate depending on which source you study i don't so know i always think about sweden then i think about snow so that's sad that the south doesn't have any snow around or above 60 percent of the country is forested making it the second most wow. forested country in europe after finland it's also important to note that sweden has april weather or april weather in which uh well it's pretty crazy yeah, yeah. pretty much anything can happen yeah yeah we have exactly the same saying in German. April, April, der macht doch was er will. So uh, April, April, he makes what uh, it makes what he wants to make. Well, the sun is finally out after six months of darkness. So clothes come off. Mm -hmm. We sit in the sun. Oh, whenever you see a sweet too, expect this. <laughs> Facing the sun, eyes closed. And then all of a sudden a storm hits or <laughs> snow comes or... Out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Out of nowhere. The interesting thing though is that Sweden in the past was kind of not much like what they are today. In fact, at the beginning of the 20th century, much of Scandinavia was struggling with widespread poverty. However, much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunder, mm. they had the record order. Wirtschaftswunder in which Sweden's economy bursted with now industries and innovation. And today you have the largest economy and most powerful nation in Northern Europe. To explain a little bit more on the way Sweden takes what it has and flourishes, here's Noah! He's back! Well, here we are. Once again, let's get to it. Despite having lush green lands, only about 7% of the country is arable. Therefore, agriculture isn't exactly their main focus. Today, much of Sweden's open market economy is heavily based on exports, especially in the timber and mining sectors. The largest mine in Kiruna is actually so large they are currently in the process of moving the town and residents to make more mines. This is how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter and third largest stainless steel exporter. First, lumber. The Swedes love trees so much that a long time ago during famine times, they would put crushed tree bark into their rye bread, which was actually good because the bark had lots of minerals and fiber. Go figure. The lumber industry plays a huge role in their world renowned. Was this good for the teeth? Own furniture commerce. We've all heard of IKEA having over 450 stores in about 60 countries. IKEA they actually studied that in design school. Is that but true, Noah? That is true. Not that I do it, but here we are. You might be familiar with other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania, H &M Spotify. H&M is Swedish? Wow. I didn't know that. And of course, the largest domestic company and only one on the Fortune 500 list, Volvo. Great cars, I might say. And oh, that, that is, is uh, that is, that is that. Until we meet again. Thank you, Noah. Now going off of business talk, domestically, Sweden does have a pretty complex system when it comes to taxes that plays into their fiscal structure. As of 2021, their individual tax rates range from about 32% to 52% based on income bracket margins. And that's not even including other factors like corporate value added taxes, which can be up to 25%. When you add them, you get the second highest total tax revenue behind Denmark. Yeah, just what I was to say, that seems to be quite high. 
of its country's income. Yeah, that's uh, you guys kind of have high taxes. Well, we yeah. also have healthcare. <laughs> And good schools. And good and roads. And we get free food. Roads. Yeah, by the way, I wanted to study in Sweden because it was free for a European citizen or a EU citizen like me. But then I was against it because of I thought, oh my God, the weather in the, in the winter is so cold. I better get to uh, go to Austria. Uh, yeah, uh, this is what I did now. <laughs> roads. In any case, another interesting thing about Sweden is its wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Guess who's back? As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place full of cold climate animals. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk, after Russia and Canada. There's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every year to maintain population control. Killing your national animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! There are 30 national parks and nature protection zones, and the most famous being <coughs> in the North Lapland area, where reindeer, musks, oh, wow. grey owls, and brown bears can be spotted right freely. Oh, that's such a cool Fun face. Fact, reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed, which help with traction. But in winter, the pads shrink and the hoof is exposed, which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, Sweden is one of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into, but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it. Speaking what? of making babies, I made one myself. Here's a photo of why? Why? My daughter. She's beautiful. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I remember the first meal I had in Sweden was reindeer meatballs. You guys love your reindeer. What's your favorite dishes in Sweden? Is Are they actually from reindeer and not from, from cows? Probably is reindeer meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I would say salmon. Grilled in the summer, oven baked in the winter. Oh yeah, and you guys know fika, right? Yeah, fika. It's funny because coffee was actually banned from Sweden like five times in the 1700s, but that's another story. To explain a little bit more fika and the food, here's Johan and Rikard. All right guys, well, this is uh, fika. And to explain, here is Johan. So in Sweden, fika is a huge tradition. It's something you do daily. It's a part of a workday break where you kind of like gather. I think we have the same. It's called Kaffee und, und Kuchen, so coffee and cake break at around four or something or three in the afternoon. You sit down and you have coffee. Historically, it's been that seven types of cookies minimum plus cinnamon rolls and cardamom yeah, it's rolls pretty much. and um, then pastries such as princess cakes and other things. Every day, but not necessarily this many sorts. I wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, and then the most famous on the bottom would be the princess cake. So if I'm going to try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. I know. Wow. And Hello there. My name is Dick and I'm here to talk about some of the Boats. We have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Sill, or as you will call it, herring. Don't you have this really, really disgusting dish? I don't know what it's called. Where you put a fish somewhere and then leave it for a few months or something like this. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or sour herring. I, I think it's that. Pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or... I think it's dead. Or herring, but eat at your own risk. All of these yeah. foods can be eaten at the traditional smörgåsbord, or smör smörgåsbord, basically a Swedish buffet. We also have kallis, or Charles, caviar. It's a Swedish style of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course we have knäckebröd! Knäckebröd! the traditional national dish of Sweden, Swedish tacos. Mm -hmm. Over to some drinks from Sweden. We have aquavit, or flavored caraway liquor. Julmus and Christmas, and Pask. Musk, must on Easter. Uh, Is this like Glühwein? So mold wine, I think, in English? We have Glug. And of course, my personal favorite, Punch. It's made this by is the like Glühwein. Spirits like Arak brandy or rum with Arak tea with some sugar and water. Very sweet, very strong, and very nice. Thank you, Johan and Ricard. Oh yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you, have, you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know? Logic, yeah. The way it goes is that Norwegian people go to Sweden to buy alcohol, Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. You guys all have a system. Yeah, Logic we have a system family. for cheap alcohol. So this is 
there's probably a bunch of 16 year olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. Okay. The ferry itself is a party. Yeah. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingborg. Oh, and a funny story, I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? Well, obviously, liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born, supposedly. Oh, what's that thing about candy on Saturdays? Explain, Carolina. Uh, you get to eat candy on Saturdays. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We got to run to the store and pick our favorite candy. It's amazing. Best in the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do that. Well, on that note, we've talked a lot about some of your small little traditions. Let's explain a little bit more in... I asked Jagger Peep Johan to explain Swedish people and what they're like, and he described it something like this. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. The way I see it, it's kind of like... Oh! So, it's similar to German, but Germans are way more... <laughs> Germans are way more... Hey, when they see somebody, somebody lost, that looks like a, somebody from another country, they are going to help the person. But if it's some German, they probably won't. No, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, and I dropped my wallet. And I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. What? Can help me or... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was I supposed to help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my no, God. No, no. Yeah, here's... Also, what are some other kind of taboos in Swedish culture? I also... I don't know. I seen a short or something like this that Swedish persons don't flirt or don't if I see a pretty girl uh, on the street that you never go to them and say hey I'm Chris blah blah is it a thing I guess uh, when you get on the bus if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone don't do that just yeah. don't and don't have too much eye contact in general preferably none explain what is uh logo mignante law it's a law that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone it's like don't tell people that you got good grades just get them and move on but you know, kind of let it, them see it on Yeah, it's, it's definitely based on status. Logum is this word that does not exist in English, and it basically means not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount. I would mm. say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that <laughs> fooling myself saying that? Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, you're not allowed to. Yeah, I have also to say. So many Swedish people that I had in the comments or also sometimes I meet a Swede in Germany somehow. Uh, I always like very, very intelligent persons and you see that they are very reflected and that they think about stuff. I think that's it for today because you see I'm a chatty person and I always ask many questions. So I think before this video gets 50 minutes, we cut it right here. Keep liking, subscribing and we see each other in the next video. Bye.